tonight, our new evidence on the spread of rats that survive poisons we've relied on for decades. We've tested 17 counties and every single one of them has got resistant rats. Warnings that Britain could be on the brink of a pest control crisis. Unless we have access to these poisons to use in these situations, it's going to be pretty disastrous, I think, for rat control. Good evening and welcome to The Tonight programme. There's new evidence that rats across large parts of Britain have changed. Genetic tests show that the rodents have developed a mutation that allows them to survive some conventional poisons. Chris Choi reports on the rise of the super rats. As long as we've lived in communities, they've been our least loved neighbours. Rats are carriers of potentially fatal diseases like Viles disease, Lassa fever and bubonic plague, to name but a few. They ruin our food stocks, contaminate animal feed and damage our homes. But now Britain's rat problem is intensifying. For the first time on British TV, we can show a live super rat. Confirmed to be resistant to poisons. Though it looks no different, it has a natural mutation in its DNA. And we have new evidence thousands just like it are spreading across the country. Our trail to track down the super rat starts in a pleasant suburb of Oxford. Well, we spotted it probably back in November, I think, and uh, we were just having a meeting with some people here. It was about half past ten in the morning, and I saw this thing dart across the garden. In broad daylight? Yeah, yeah, after I had to do a bit of a double take, but that's what it was. So we got the rat people in. But then we started, a good while later, we started hearing noises through the skirting here on the back, behind this wall. So I started putting down my own poison and uh, they seemed to eat that like it was candy. The couple had tried the usual poison but they didn't have the usual rats. This is one of the areas where rats have got this new mutation mm -hmm. where it's harder to get rid of them. They can eat the poison and survive. Right. What kind of effect do you think is that going to have for people like you trying to get rid of them? So I guess you just got to hope that something else comes along that will kill them because they're not going to go away forever, are they? They'll be back again at some point. So it's back to traditional traps, and when one was caught, we commissioned a special DNA test. The results confirm that this home didn't just have rats, it had super rats. There you go. And how does that make you feel? A bit uncomfortable. You want to it'll be, make me more vigilant to keep an eye open. And we've also got lots of piping in the back here that's exposed so they can get in and out of it, and I've got to do something about that to restrict their access. Whilst the rats have been making a giant leap forward, we've been using the same family of anticoagulant poisons since the 1950s. That's given rats the time to evolve their resistance. It's a type of chemical warfare, and we're losing. It's really a very effective poison if used correctly, but the problem is we've been using it very intensively for a long time. We're using the same group of chemicals over and over and over again, resistance will build up. So the UK, but also many other parts of the world, are, ha are suffering from this phenomenon of resistance development. Rats that remain susceptible to poisons die off. Those that survive prevail, and armed with an evolutionary advantage, they pass on their death-defying DNA to offspring. They have a facility to breed as soon as they give birth. So a female rat can give birth to a, li a litter of, say, 6 to 12 young, and the next day she can mate and get pregnant again. It can be 6 to 12 babies coming out, and then you make the assumption that maybe half of those are females, and then within a couple months they're mature, and they're going off and breeding. So this is how you can imagine populations get very high very quickly. And in certain areas of the world, we've done some very good calculations on this, so that one rat leads to 120 rats in 120 days. 
The misery of an out-of-control infestation when poisons aren't used is a reminder of just how much we rely on them. They had rat urine all over the surfaces. In the kitchen drawers, we found uh, rat poo and wheat. Mary Ann Gibbard and her young son have been driven from their own home since it was overrun with rats in April, leaving their house in disarray. They've ruined um, my friend's um, sleeping bag. Um, they've also ruined my son's clothing. They've urinated in the hood. Um, they've chewed boxes. They've ruined my airbed. Just mainly urine on all of it. I don't want to come in this room at all because the rats carry diseases. And just when they thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. In what looked like a scene from a horror film, the rats turned on each other to survive as pest controllers struggled to contain the infestation. There's a hole with blood coming down and they did have actually rat droppings on the side of it and all. The blood coming from the walls was from the rats where they've been eating each other. At night time, when you're trying to get to sleep, you just can't. Um, they're just banging around, pure nulling at wood, and it's an irritating noise where you can't cut off and go to sleep. So you just got to basically put up with it. But in the end, it wasn't just sleep that they lost. Unable to live alongside the rats, the council agreed to rehouse them. There are five chemicals used to kill rats in the UK. The three most toxic poisons still kill all rats, but are restricted for professional use only. And except on rare occasions, under special license, they can't be used outside, where rats usually live. The other two are available over the counter and can be used outdoors. But as we're finding out, resistance means in some areas, often, they don't kill the rats. Do you think people should be worried about the, the results you've got? This is the man keeping tabs on the super rats. For seven years, his laboratory has been tracking the rise of poison resistance, and now he's given us his research. It's the most complete picture scientists have ever assembled on how far super rats have spread. The resistant rats are much more widespread than, than we ever thought. We've tested 17 counties, and every single one of them has got resistant rats. Uh, was an amazing sort of finding to us. We didn't expect to have every single county having resistant rats. Resistance has been found in more areas than ever before. In Yorkshire, Kent, all along the M4 corridor through Reading, Swindon and Gloucestershire, in Bishop's Castle, Shropshire, Fakenham in Norfolk, as well as Dumfries and Galloway in Scotland. 100% of the rats tested have the genetic ability to survive poisons. Other areas like Gwynedd in Wales, Sheffield and Oswestry show high proportions of specimens have the super rat mutation. I think people should be concerned about um, these rats and resistant rats uh, because of public health concerns, because they carry uh, diseases that can cause, cause death, and like Wheels disease um, and various other bacteria and viruses, and also they um, damage buildings and also uh, eat grains in storage for, in agriculture, etc. They cost billions of pounds damage uh, worldwide. So it's a, sort of a time bomb of resistance building up over, uh, over generations of rats. And you really see it in, in those dramatic terms of being a, a kind of time bomb? Yeah, so eventually areas will, could go from 10% resistance. With the use of the current poisons, that will eventually, over time, go up to only resistant rats remaining. In the real life rat race, a form of natural selection is giving the rats an advantage. But our research shows that changes to council services and charges could also be giving the pests a new advantage. Rat populations used to be managed strategically at council and national level. But cuts have meant this overview could be being lost. A freedom of information request for this programme revealed that nearly a third of councils have no pest control service at all. And of those councils that do offer pest control, more than a third charge £50 or more for the service.
over half have seen their charges for rat infestations increase since 2008. The problem with um, local authorities now charging for rodent control uh, is that many people who uh, may be uh, not as well off as perhaps they were um, will not complain about them. They'll just live with them uh, with the, the, the obvious consequences. But from the industry comes a warning. Nobody should expect the Pied Piper to play for free. In the past, local authorities have been prepared to do this for nothing. Uh, those days are gone, uh, and people are going to have to pay the proper price uh, for getting a professional to do the job for them. But in areas where rats have developed resistance to poisons, there may be little point paying for the chemicals. If people live in an area where this poison isn't working, they're just wasting their money, aren't they? Yes, if the, if the pest control organisations um, don't know there's resistant rats in that area, they could be wasting time. Because in certain areas of the country that we know of already, they shouldn't be putting the poisoning down. So you're saying they might have to start using traps, and I was saying to you, but that's going to make it really expensive for people that are already financially stretched. They just aren't going to be able to shell out for this kind of pest control. You'd have to monitor the traps, one trap, one rat, instead of a whole colony of rats wiped out by poison. So doing one animal at a time with the traps, whatever type of trap it is, would, is a lot more labour uh, intensive and costly. Even in areas where resistance to poisons has been found, pest controllers say it can still be effective in particular circumstances. They tell us that professional judgement is used in each individual case. And there are poisons that will still work against the super rats, but fears about the impact on harvest mice, birds of prey, and even domestic pets have kept these chemicals from being used outside. We still have chemicals which will kill these, these resistant rats, but we are not legally allowed to use the, these products uh, where we need to, to control them. There is uh, a huge um, challenge between time trying to protect wildlife um, uh, and trying to reduce and contain rodent populations. This is a, a barn owl, a cherished part of Britain's wildlife, but right now they're tangled up in this whole super rat debate. That's because the poisons that some people feel we need to kill the resistant rats could also poison the birds of prey that feed on them. This is a fantastic habitat for barn owls. This is rough grassland. It's really thick and tussocky and spongy. But there are some, like the Barn Owl Trust's David Ramsden, who believe that the damage these poisons can do to even a small number of Britain's most iconic and treasured wildlife is too great a price to pay and over 125,000 people have signed an online petition that calls for even stricter controls on poison use. We now know that the route of the poison into owls and kestrels is largely through small mammals. Doesn't matter how much you cover the bait, you cannot prevent that. 84% of barn owls contain poison, 100% of kestrels, 91% of red kites. That's not acceptable. Is there real evidence that birds like this are being killed at the moment? Absolutely, there's no doubt that a small proportion are killed directly because of the rat poison. What we're concerned about is the vast majority that carry a sublethal dose and how that could be impacting their survival. Opinions in the scientific community are divided on the impact of poison residues in birds and barn owl populations are currently on the increase in the UK whereas rats are a proven hazard to farm and wild animals, not to mention humans. But for all the people that are crying out for an answer to their rat problem, they, they might hate the idea of a barn owl being harmed, but they might see it as just the price that has to be paid in, in difficult circumstances. Poisoning rats is the worst way to kill them because they'll build up resistance to the poison. Killing rats can never solve the problem you have to remove what the rats are eating and remove the places that they're living. That's the only long-term solution. So this is where it all started. 
Um, yes, yes, it's commemorated in this elaborate plaque. We're facing a dilemma in our attitude to rat poisons, and nobody personifies that more than Bill Oddy. You never have a gnome when you need one, can you? He travels the world reporting on wildlife, but recently found a little too much of it on his own doorstep. I kept seeing rats coming down here, and I didn't mind the odd one, but that evening we ended up with something like 30 or 40 all over here. It was just a cascade, and at one point there were five rats in here, and then um, they started pushing one another out, you know. Another one would leap and miss. I did actually see one rat go inside the house. <laughs> Fortunately, it shot out again. My wife came down at this point. I give her a due, didn't freak out, but just rather firmly sort of watched them for a few seconds and said, they've got to go. I'm sorry, they've got to go. We can't have that number of rats right by the back door. It was with a heavy heart that he decided to allow rat poison to be used. I decided under, you know, I think perfectly reasonable pressure from everybody else in the house, you're going to have to, that horrible euphemism, I'm going to have to get a man in, you know. One of the really fascinating things about your perspective on this is that you kind of embody the whole dilemma because you love the wildlife, yeah. Yeah. but you wanted rid of the rats. One of the alternatives which I thought of for a moment, and I thought, well, with one or two I could handle it, but perhaps not with 30 or 40, was the humane traps. And I don't think I could put 30 or 40 of those traps out. <laughs> and, then, and then where I'd take them, you know, I'd go down a big bag full of about 40 rats. Bill Oddie feels more research is needed to find new and more targeted poisons. Pest control organisations we spoke to want the same thing chemicals that can kill the rats while being safe for other species. The most potent rat poisons are currently for professional use only and cannot be used outside without special license. A government consultation happening this summer is grappling with a decision to completely restrict or massively expand the use of all rat poisons outside. The decision by the Department of Work and Pensions could profoundly change pest control as we know it. The consequences of us not being allowed to use these baits out of doors I think could be pretty disastrous. Um, it would have a huge impact on the way we carry out treatments. You can trap a few rats, um, but controlling an infestation is going to be extremely difficult. Uh, and unless we, we have access to these poisons to use in these situations, um, it's going to be pretty disastrous, I think, for rat control. The pest control industry is working on voluntary guidelines which it hopes will mean that less poison gets into wildlife. But environmental health officers want to see the government go further. I'm not a great fan of voluntary codes. Voluntary codes actually don't work um, uh, particularly well. I think we need a statutory code to be put into place. We shouldn't be allowing the uh, use of this type of, of, of poison on rodentified side to be used by anyone that's, that's not trained um, and that can prove that they are trained. Pest control chemicals that can only be used by professionals would put common over-the-counter poisons out of the reach of ordinary householders and farmers. And while we decide what to do about the rats, they show signs of thriving more than ever, all thanks to a helping hand from us. That's what I'm talking about. Bin's full and they're just piling loads of rubbish at the side of the bin, which is not going to help. It's going to feed the rats, which is going to be great for us. And that's happening a lot. For pest controller Kevin Moore, business is booming in this terraced suburb of Leeds. I was making a butter the other day, and uh, I left my big, like I had a big packet of crisps, and left that in the kitchen, came into the front room, started eating it, and then um, went into the kitchen to get some more crisps. The rat was just on the side, inside my bag of crisps, like, eating it. The cellar of this student house has made a cosy shelter for a family of rats. I've basically put poison down in these yeah. areas here. And as you can see, all this has been nesting materials. Better bedding than what we've got at our house. Well, not 
personally, but it is for a rat. I mean, look at this. Rat Silton. And so I've put poison down, leave it for about five to ten days. We'll be back in ten days and then we'll uh, check and see what's going on, see if there's a take. Our bin's are always full. We can't take the bin bags out and put them in the bin because it's full. Sometimes we have to dump them in someone else's bins, but, like, uh, I don't know, there's just not enough space. So we end up with bin bags inside and then that attracts the rats coming from outside. There's terrace properties, so if one person's got a problem, they all get a problem. And they're all through the cavity walls and straight in. It's water source, you've got a lot of food that's been around, there's a lot of bins that's overfilled. You've got a lot of rubbish around, which is holding water, attracting rats to the areas. And then a poorly maintained property is going to allow rats to get into the cavity. And then it's a rat run from all. So one, one property gets it, the next property gets it, the property after that gets it. Our freedom of information requests found that over two-thirds of councils now have fortnightly rubbish collection. Since 2008, over half of councils have seen a reduction in the amount of money they spend on refuse collection, and just under half have seen a reduction in funds put aside for street cleaning. The rise of the super rat has captured public imagination. Press and media have reflected a rising anxiety, but things aren't always what they seem. This is the ultimate Ratzilla clip. It's been viewed on the internet hundreds of thousands of times. It claims to depict a giant sewer rat. The truth? Well, take a look. This is an African pouched rat, a domestic pet, considerably larger than the brown rats we're used to seeing in the UK. A rat similar to this was the star of that video. There are pictures of so-called super rats that have become almost part of popular culture. Yeah. Why do you think it is that there is such popular appeal that the people that are running the newspapers are interested in having these kind of images? Scaremongering. Scaremongering, wanting people to get behind them for wanting to, to, to kill the animals in the first place. The stories of, of plagues and disease caused by these animals you know, it, it drums up fear in, in society over these animals. I don't like how she's looking at me. <laughs> she's all right. <laughs> she's taking you in. Just... Keep your own side of the table. <laughs> it was good to finally meet someone happy to live with a rat, even one this size. But most of us would rather not, and the future of poisons that can keep them at bay will be decided within the next few months. Keeping rodents under control is a vital piece of the public health jigsaw and should not be um, dismissed or forgotten as some shock horror type of uh, story. This is actually very serious public health work. That vital decision on the future regulation of rodent poison is expected in the autumn. If you'd like to check if you're in an area where the super rats have moved in, all the details are on our website at itv.com slash tonight. In the meantime, though, good evening and thanks for watching. Coming up next week, the most common cancer in Britain is on the rise. Tonight investigates why more women are being diagnosed with breast cancer and what's being done to beat it. Well, it's family matters in Weatherfield and Gail could be in for a bit of a shock. It's Coronation Street tomorrow night at 7.30. But on the way next tonight, is Moira about to come clean and lose everything? We're right back with Emmerdale after this.